Okay, point eight. Way ahead, way behind. What does that mean? Well, in poker, especially in in Texas Hold'em, uh, as well as Omaha, but especially in Texas Hold'em, there are going to be many situations where you're a market favorite, and there's going to be a lot of situations where you think you're good, <laughs> but you might be a big underdog. So this is so-called way ahead, way behind. What that means is if you are way ahead, it's unlikely that your opponent will pay you off because you are so far ahead. And if you're way behind, you're basically donating <laughs> to your opponent uh, with every bet and raise you make. In these scenarios, way ahead, way behind, it's, it's good to adhere to pot control. Again, not to get too greedy <laughs> with your over pairs and top pair good or top pair top kickers on the flop, especially when there's multiple players involved in that pot, just for the fact that it could have fit, of course, again, two pair sets, flop straights, flushes, whatever. And as we mentioned in previous videos, of course, very, very strong draws at 15 ounce or better are going to be ahead of your over pair and top pair. So if they push on the flop with 15 outs, clean outs, and you think the guy's a fish, actually he's not, uh, you're the fish because you didn't know that he had probably 50 to 54 percent equity plus all the fold equity um, involved in a flop push. So way ahead, way behind, very tricky spot. I'll put an example here for you guys actually too. You're holding kings, flop comes 2-8 ace rainbow. So, either he's got the ace or he doesn't. <laughs> if he's got the ace, you have effectively two outs and about 9% equity to the, to the river. Uh, the likelihood of hitting one of your two outs on the turn is only 4 to 5%. Okay, 4 to 5. Yeah, actually in the middle there. And, yeah, that's just not going to happen a whole heck of a lot, namely 23 to 1 against. Good. <laughs> Uh, another example, you've got ace-king yet again, and the flop comes for king-rainbow versus three opponents who only cold-called and over-cold-called your early position raise, for example. Do you have a big hand here? Dramatic pause. Hell no. <laughs> you definitely do not. You have a strong hand, but you have a very, very vulnerable hand, and against three opponents who are good, uh, the likelihood that one of those guys has a set of fours or sevens, or uh, 56, making it open into straight draw, and if it were too suited, he would have again your 15 out draw scenario, clean against your ace king in that, in that case, if you're also not suited, and it's just a tricky spot versus three opponents. Looks good is relatively strong, will be good enough to take it down very often. But again, if somebody is on a set of four, sevens, uh, if some whack job called with a suited king seven also happens, 47 suited, you'll see at the low limits even. <laughs> uh, also against savvy players who are actually loose aggressive sharks, I mean, any two is definitely on the list. And this kind of stuff, again guys, top pair, top kicker, top pair, good kicker, over pairs, these are the hands that I myself um, have misplayed uh, because I didn't realize uh, that it was a way ahead, way behind situation. And I can tell you, if I could get all the thousands of dollars back that I lost in those situations, I'd be, okay, not rich, but <laughs> um, it, yeah, it would be exceedingly good for my bankroll right now. And it's simply because I overplayed over pairs, I overplayed my top pair top kickers, top pair good kickers in multi-way pots. And that's one of those things that you probably won't properly get and properly implement until you get stung once or twice. Really, really good. <laughs> so uh, I hope that you take this one to heart right now. Over pairs, top pair top kicker, top pair good kicker, any top pair in full ring games especially in multi-way pots, also in shorthanded play, in pots with more than one opponent, they're simply vulnerable as hell. And 
in these cases, top pair here, um, top kicker, 4-7 king rainbow board, out of position versus three opponents, do you want to make a c-bet into three opponents? Well, you don't want to make a c-bet bluff into three opponents, almost never. Um, that is a real table specific call a table let's say table specific decision for you if you see that all three players never or almost never fold to see bets let's say they have a fold to see bet average of 20 percent you can bet into that um, think as a value bet thinking that you're good and hoping to narrow the field maybe down to a heads up pot on the turn very possible. It's also very possible just to check call and again then adhere to pot control, see what happens on the turn, maybe bet it out depending on who's still in the pot, etc. But again, that's just one of those situations where you need to be ready for a shocker when you get extreme action versus your over pairs and top pair type, type hens, especially again in multi-way pots. So I've expounded upon this point a bit because it is so important, I think, for long-term win rates, especially at the low and mid limits. And we've got here point 8A, avoiding big mistakes and big pots equals long-term profit for you. I didn't write equals long-term uh, reduce losses, <laughs> right? Uh, reduce loss is essentially gain for you when when considered after the fact. Let's say for example again I get all these thousands of dollars back from um, the hands that I misplayed in my way ahead way behind situations with my over pairs and top pair hands. I look at my bankroll now and I look at my bankroll if I had played those way ahead way behind situations uh, in in the manner of pot control instead of pot building and of course yeah, I would be, I would have that much more profit, say, in the long run. So it's it's a bit, yeah, depending on how you look at it. But again, the adage, a chip saved, a dollar saved, a euro saved, is a chip earned. And this one is huge, guys. If you avoid stacking off as often as possible, <laughs> without without your two pair or better hands you will be amazed at what that actually means for your bankroll in the long run. So avoiding big mistakes and big pots, that can't be stressed enough. Uh, big mistakes and small pots, okay, whatever. It happens, it's not so dramatic, but big mistakes and big pots is a bad, bad, bad thing. That's where you know all of your hours of small pot play is pissed into the wind on one big bad move in a big pot. And you can essentially take the three or four hours or whatever it took for you to build up let's say the hundred big uh, hundred big blind uh, profit that you had in that session or two sessions or whatever and you can lose that entire amount the entire hundred big uh, big blinds that you built up slowly by playing your tight aggressive or tag lag style in one pot and that's just a huge bummer you can basically start back over from zero erase those three hours from your life and <laughs> write the whole thing off to not properly understanding way ahead, way behind scenarios. Of course, you're going to stack off from time to time. Everybody does, even when you're a market favorite. That's called variance, and that's highly unfortunate. Uh, it's unfortunately part of the game. Uh, on the flip side, it's also a good part of the game because bad players would never stick around, uh, barring addicts if they didn't have this luck factor. So, take it as you will, but this one, again, way ahead, way behind, please understand this principle. Avoiding big mistakes and big pots equals long-term profit. Okay, if you want to see it the other way, at least long-term reduced losses, market losses, um, yeah, over the course of your poker career. So, point B here, limpers over limpers and cold callers in the blinds and also in middle and late position as well as players who cold call and then over call a squeeze three bet are often holding 
What? Yes. Small and middle pairs, max stretch suited connectors, and the occasional ASEC suited or Broadway hand. Commit this one to memory as well. <laughs> this is one of the situations. You know, you've got limpers, you isolate the guy then limp calls, actually two or three guys maybe limp call, and flop comes again, same scenario, 4-7 king rainbow. You got your ace king, hit top pair, top kicker against three fish, and the fish donks into you. <laughs> so it could be king 10, or it could be a pair of sevens or pair of fours that's set up on the flop. It could be a pair of aces even, ridiculously enough. These guys also limp call that, um, or limp raise that. You'll see that as well. Um, it's just everything in the world in that scenario that they could have. And you just simply don't know where you, where you stand. <laughs> so that means either you re-raise versus a donk to get information on, on where you are in the hand, or you just call and play it again for .7 pot control. Again, when you get limpers, over limpers, when you get callers, cold callers, over cold callers especially, in position, be, I mean, very much have flop sets, flop two pair, monster draws, all that well at the forefront, completely in your mind. That's where you need to really, really be careful. So very good. Uh, point C, always remember that, okay, just mention that sets happened, as do two pair plus straights and flushes. As unlikely as they may be, that's part of your job as a good poker player, and that's to decipher what opponents could have based on their ranges, based on their style of play, based on their lines of play, again, given certain pre-flop and post-flop action. So you get a super passive post-flop player who all of a sudden donks into you out of position on exactly that same 4-7 king rainbow board. <laughs> get ready for that chakra. Uh, you get a, a maniac. Okay, a guy, let's say, with 70% V-pip in a full ring game, raising 40% of his entire range. And he also limp calls, or um, maybe raise calls in early position. Same flop, 4-7 king rainbow. That guy might be on 4-7 suited, who knows? It's just, it's just one of those things. The more players you have in the pot, or that you have involved in any given hand, the greater the likelihood is of um, flop sets, and big draws, flop two pair, etc. That just needs to be very, very much clear to you and in your mind all the time. Heads up, you got a lot more liberty. It's much less likely that your opponents will have hit the flop, and you can play on accordingly. But just again, multi way pots, honesty is a good thing, and most players are, especially mid and low limit players, they are very honest in multi way pots. So again, passive player bets. Get the hell out of his way. <laughs> uh, or, again, play for pot control. Maybe float him, see what he does on the turn of the river. Yeah. You have, of course, all the different moves open to you that we explained in the first video. But this video is, of course, you know, how to manipulate that pot, post-flop especially, um, given your holding, what you flop, what you turn, how the river looks, and your respective opponents, and table dynamics and history.